A missile is made up of four essential parts, each of which has its own unique assortment of components that are raw materials. The body of the missile, the guidance system, the propellant, and the warhead are the four components that make up the overall system. The body of the missile is constructed out of steel alloys or high-strength aluminum alloys. These materials are often coated with chromium along the cavity of the body in order to shield themselves from the extreme pressures and temperatures that are experienced during a missile launch. The guiding system is comprised of a wide variety of components, some of which are low-tech and others of which are high-tech, and it is intended to provide the highest possible level of guidance capabilities. The missile uses these components, which consist of a photo-detecting sensor and optical filters in order to decipher the laser wavelengths that are being sent from the parent aircraft. The sensing dome of the photo-detecting sensor is the most essential component of the device, and it may be fabricated out of glass, quartz, or silicon. There is a possibility that the electronic suite of a missile may use gallium arsenide semiconductors. Nonetheless, some suites continue to depend only on copper or silver wire. The solid nitrogen-based propellants used by missiles serve as their primary source of fuel. To achieve a desired effect on the propellant's performance, it is possible to use various additives such as graphite or nitroglycerine. And the warhead of the missile may be loaded with extremely explosive mixes based on nitrogen, fuel, air explosives, or compounds including phosphorus. Steel is normally used to encapsulate the warhead. However, aluminum alloys have also been known to be employed in this capacity. Design. On today's battlefield, you'll often encounter two primary categories missiles. The first kind reads the laser light that is produced by the airplane or helicopter that is doing the launching. The electrical suite of the missile sends orders to the fines on its body. In an attempt to maintain it aligned with the laser beam as it travels through space. Because of its tendency to ride the laser beam in the direction of its intended target, this sort of missile is known as a beam rider. The second category of missile has onboard sensors that are able to detect laser light that has been reflected off of the target. Following the selection of a target by the pilot of the aircraft or helicopter, the missile is then fired once the target has been struck by a laser beam fired from a target designator. The sensor on the missile calculates the amount of deviation that exists between its flight route and the path that the reflected light takes. After that, correction signals are sent to the control surfaces of the missile by means of the electronic suite which directs the missile toward its intended target. The first stage of the design process for a missile always consists of the designer doing computer simulations, whatever the kind of missile being designed. The designer is given guidance through the process of selecting the appropriate laser type, body length, nozzle configurations, cavity size, warhead type, propellant mass, and control surfaces by using these simulations. After that, the designer will compile a set of documents that include all pertinent technical calculations, including those that were produced by computer simulations. After that, the capabilities of the laser and the control surfaces are taken into consideration while designing the electronic suite. The manufacturing process, constructing the body and attaching the fins. This is the first step to take. Die casting is used to create the two sides of the steel or aluminum body. Die casting is pouring molten metal into a steel die that has been fashioned into the required form and then allowing the metal to cool and solidify in the die. At this point, an optional coating made of chromium may be put to the inside surfaces of the halves that correspond to the cavity of a finished missile. After that, the halves are welded together, and after that, nozzles are put to the back end of the body, where the welding was just completed. The second phase in the process involves the addition of movable fines to the missile body at certain positions along its length. Either the fins may be put into recesses that were purposefully cut into the body, or they can be connected to mechanical joints that are then welded to the outside of the body. Casting the propellant. The third step is to carefully apply the propellant to the cavity of the missile in order to create a uniform coating. This is necessary because any inconsistencies will result in an unpredictable burning rate, which in turn hinders the performance of the missile. The use of centrifugal force in the application of the propellant is the most effective method for producing a coating that is consistent throughout. Casting is the process that takes place in an industrial centrifuge that is well protected and located in a remote area as a safety measure to reduce the risk of an explosion or fire. Assembling the guidance system. The following constitutes the fourth step. A set of activities that are performed independently from the remainder of the missile's assembly are used to build the primary laser components. These operations include the photo detecting sensor and optical filters. After that, the circuits that support the laser system are soldered 
onto pre-printed boards. At this stage, particular care is taken to safeguard optical materials from excessive heat, since this might change the wavelength of light that the missile will be able to detect. The laser subsystem that has been built has now been put aside in preparation for the final assembly. Additionally, built in a manner distinct from the rest of the missile are the printed circuit boards that make up the electronic suite. At this point, microchips are inserted into the boards if the design specifies that they should be there. The fifth phase is that the guidance system, which consists of the laser components and the electronic suite may now be integrated. This is accomplished by connecting the necessary circuit boards and placing the complete assembly into the body of the missile via an access panel. After that, the control surfaces of the missile are connected to the guidance system by a series of relay wires. These wires are also fed into the body of the missile through access panels. However, the photo detecting sensor and its housing are only added at this stage for beam riding missiles. In this instance, the housing is precisely fastened to the external diameter of the missile near its rear facing backward to interpret the laser signals from the parent aircraft. This allows the sensor to read the laser signals sent by the parent aircraft. Final assembly. This brings us to the sixth step. The insertion of the warhead marks the beginning of the final assembly step during the manufacturing of a missile. During this operation, extreme caution is required since even the smallest of errors might result in disastrous consequences. Attaching the warhead may be accomplished by the use of simple methods, such as bolting or riveting, which do not put the user in danger. At the very front of the warhead where the guiding systems that zero in on the reflected laser light are the photo detecting sensor is secured in its housing and is then bolted into position. The maker has successfully produced one of the most intricate, sophisticated, and possibly hazardous pieces of hardware that is in use today with the conclusion of this last step of assembly. Quality control. Prior to the assembly process, each significant component is put through a battery of stringent quality assurance testing. In the first step of the process, the propellant has to be able to pass a test in which examiners will light a sample of the propellant while replicating the circumstances of a missile's flight. The subsequent evaluation is going to be an experiment in a wind tunnel and it will include a model of the missile's body. During this test, the flow of air surrounding the missile will be evaluated while it is in flight. In the next step of the process, the electronic suite will be put through a series of tests to establish the rate and precision with which orders are sent to the missile's control surfaces. After that, the components of the laser are examined to determine their dependability and an examination beam is discharged so that analysts may record the photo detecting sensor's capacity to read the appropriate wavelength. At the end of the process, a certain number of finished missiles are subjected to test firings from airplanes or helicopters over practice targets on designated ranges. And that wraps things up. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. Please hit the subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.